Did you know that even this video about prequels itself has a prequel? Because this story actually all began when you pressed that fateful yet alluring subscribe button for the Grand Line review, allowing you to receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, which has led you here today. And if you have yet to subscribe, then please do, and let us begin your fated journey. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we're going to be getting into a slightly obscure topic compared to what we normally cover, but with One Piece approaching its quote unquote end game, and pretty much guaranteed to end at some point, I'd say this decade, I would like to take a moment to discuss the future. Well, the future, primarily from the perspective of the past, that is. Because once One Piece is over, it would be foolish to think that this would be the end of the highest selling manga of all time, and whether or not Oda himself is involved in future projects, I would wager that we are most certainly going to be getting more of it in some form, given that it is practically an excuse to print money. And one of the greatest money generating schemes that I could think of is to publish a series of One Piece prequels. And today I'm going to be discussing the prequel stories that I think we absolutely need. Now to be clear, these prequels don't have to be anywhere near as long as One Piece itself. In fact, that's probably impossible. So I'm mostly talking about fairly short run stuff, ranging from a handful of chapters, maybe even one chapter, to at most maybe a run of about a year, depending on what we're talking about. But let's get straight into it with one of the prequels that I would most like to see, which ideally would be centered around the Roger Pirates. Now, now, without going into manga spoilers, that journey, which you know is finally getting a bit of attention after decades of publication, but I don't think that we are ever going to have a solid chunk of story with the crew during the run of One Piece. And I believe that that's largely because we're not going to delve that far into the detail of any one character or group that is not the Straw Hats. The big thing about One Piece is that this is the story of the Straw Hat Pirates, so that's the group that we get to enjoy in all of their glorious detail and subtleties. Whereas other groups like the Roger Pirates, yeah, we'll see a bit of them here and there, but their stories are mainly going to remain mysterious except for their major events. But that's less my interest. What I really want is to explore the Roger Pirates on a level that we get to see the Straw Hats. I want to see them on a mundane quest where they're just having fun and probably beating some sort of bad guy at the end, maybe. It doesn't need to be world shaking, oh my god, Pirate King, Poneglyph history stuff. In fact, it should be just the opposite. You know, a short story about Roger's early days, like whatever his equivalent of the East Blue saga was. Like we know that Roger was born in East Blue, so why not give us maybe 50 chapters of him starting his adventure in the old world? And you could have a bunch of cameo appearances, like have him visit Koki village or whatnot, and then end the entire story with him setting sail into the Grand Line, along with however many crew members that he had gathered by then, sort of mirroring how the Straw Hats first began their journey into the Grand Line. That or just straight up give us more of the Roger Pirates in their prime, and maybe focus on some of the more mysterious members of the crew, like Seagull. Because I would pay any amount of money available to me to see a mini series with these guys. They're all just so captivating, but of course, they're certainly not the only ones that could command their own prequel series. And next, I'd like to present the idea of a series focusing on the exploits of one monkey up because the more I learn about the history of this man, the more I think he really demands his own series as a protagonist. Putting Roger aside, for now, Garp is probably the most legendary figure in this world, and it would be so cool to see his journey enlisting in the Marines, and following his career working his way up the ranks, and developing close relationships with characters like Sengoku and Suru. And I just know that any up-to-date manga readers will feel the exact same way after a certain chapter, because after that I honestly feel like one of the most unfortunate aspects of One Piece is that we will never get to truly see figures like Garp acting in their prime, rather we'll just receive scattered panels here and there. Which is a very effective device, and all the praise in the world to Oda for managing to hype up these characters, but man do I crave more of them. Especially Garp, because his strongest stuff all has to do with his time with the Marines, whereas most of what we know of Garp is how terrible a grandfather he is. So take all of that away in the prequel, and you will have one incredibly phenomenal character to follow throughout the world. Alright, next up I'm going to throw out something maybe a bit left field, and suggest a Gecko Moria prequel. And this might have a lot of you sighing, but really, if something like this was ever announced, then I would be beyond hyped. Moria is a tragic character to me, both in terms of his actual story and in terms of his betrayal. He's one of my least favorite characters in the series because I don't particularly identify with his philosophy on becoming the Pirate King without doing anything whatsoever. However, I am infinitely intrigued by what drove him to that state. Because Moria wasn't always a gigantic sack of crap with minimal ambition. In fact, he was once a fiercely driven pirate and at one time even considered a rival of Kaido. That is the Gecko Moria I want to see. The young, full of dreams go-getter, who along with many other world figures, took this age by the balls, following the death of Roger, and even made it into the new world. But of course, this is a series that could only ever end tragically, with Moria's inevitable defeat at the hands of Kaido, as well as the death of his crew. But I do think something like this would really help to put a new perspective on Moria in One Piece as well. Because even though, yes, we do know his past in theory, I still can't really bring myself to care about Moria. I think that we are getting the worst possible incarnation of him in One Piece, and there is just so much 
much potential with this character that sadly may never be realized in the run of this main story. So prequel him up. Moving on, let's briefly discuss what would be an obvious fan favorite with the Ace prequel. Now the thing about this one is that we kind of already have an Ace prequel with the novels that came out detailing his early adventures, like meeting Mask Juice, finding the Marimaru no Mi, and starting the Spade Pirates. And it's a fun story, one that I think would work really well if it were adapted into a couple of chapters of manga as well, so that we could really take advantage of the One Piece aesthetic atmosphere. Other than that though, I'm not actually sure how much you could do with Ace. He's probably the one character in this video who we've explored fairly thoroughly in One Piece, but at the same time, if this whole prequel manga idea ever properly took off, then he would be pretty much guaranteed to be at the top of that list, maybe alongside Sabo as well. In fact, it would be really hard to deny the possibility, nay inevitability of a Sabo prequel as well. I guess it would detail his time with the Revolutionary Army prior to regaining his memories. You know, stuff like training with Dragon, hanging out with Koala and bestest pal Hack, going on some initial missions and all that good stuff that we can't really know about at the moment because the organization is still deliberately unexplored for the sake of profound mystery. I will say it's definitely not the story I'd be most excited for because I feel quite neutrally about Sabo in general. However, I would still be very interested to follow something like this because One Piece is my drug and I always need more. So just hook it straight into my veins. As for something I would be much more keen for though, can I interest anybody in the adventures of a young Sir Crocodile? Just like Echo Moria, we'd be taking Crocodile prior to him having his hopes and dreams crushed. And you know, come to think of it, maybe this could just be an entire miniseries. The rise and fall of famous pirates chronicling each of their journeys to despair. But Crocodile would be a pretty great one because he's such a solid figure in the series that has connections all over the place. One of which is with Ivankov, who allegedly knows a tantalizing secret regarding our Crocoboy, but it also might be able to show how he got his scar during his fight with Whitebeard. But keeping things in the realm of the warlords, what say you all to a prequel featuring the world's greatest swordsman, Dracul Mihawk? Provided we don't see much more of his history in One Piece himself, I think it would be incredible to watch his rise to becoming the world's greatest swordsman, including some duels with Shanks. And you know what? This is actually probably one of the very few stories I've mentioned that could actually end on a happy note. Weird to think about, but Mihawk is one of the very few characters in the series who seems to have set out to do something and actually achieved it. Good on him. But getting back to failures, let's talk about Joy Boy and how great it would be to see a prequel set in the Void Century. Now, Joy Boy is one of the most endearing enigmas of the series, and I'm sure that we will see him in some way, shape, or form before its end. But given that he lived eight to 900 years ago, I'm doubtful that we will get a solid piece of story, which is a shame because the more I think about it, the more I really want to explore a more ancient incarnation of the One Piece world. In fact, I'd be much less excited about following Joy Boy specifically, as I would be just getting to see this realm in a completely different context. Because most of the islands would have existed back then like Fishman Island and even places like Water 7 were around during the Void Century. So there's no shortage of nostalgia to be invoked while we make our way through a very, very different One Piece world. Taking a step back from the more meta events of One Piece, you can find a compelling prequel idea in just about every character. And another example of which that I will put forward is one Bon Clay. I mean, how many of you would just flat out deny a short Bon Clay prequel where we follow his childhood and early days training in Okama Kempo and detailing his journey into becoming a member of Baroque Works? Or along the same lines, how about an entire Baroque Works prequel where we follow each of the primary members and how they came to be a part of the organization. And in said prequel, you could even include the incident where they tried to recruit Zoro and he ended up killing that agent. And it could be very much chapter zero style where we basically had a montage of short scenes with their world figures, which sounds kind of meh on paper, but chapter zero was a pretty fantastic experience. So it could certainly work. Now this next one might be a bit early to discuss, but I would also love a prequel focusing on Marine Admiral Fujitora and quite specifically his decision to blind himself Himself. I've always been incredibly curious about exactly what kind of evil drove him to do that out of sheer desperation simply not to see it. And I know that it likely wouldn't be a singular evil either, but this guy, well, he's seen some stuff. So I feel like it would be a great glimpse, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, I'm going to intend it. A great glimpse into some of the darker aspects of One Piece. With that said, I feel like there is every chance that Fujitora will have his own flashback in the actual series detailing these events, even if it's only a short one. But failing that, you know, a one shot Fujitora origin story would have me pretty damn hype. And finally for this discussion, may I present the possibilities of the tale of Whoop Slap. That's right, in this long running prequel manga, we would get to experience the day-to-day -day life of Whoop Slap, which includes various mundane activities such as scolding young people, reading newspapers, and asking if certain people know about certain things. Plus the most important aspect of this story would be finally getting to know the legend behind Whoop Slap's Rastafarian phase. I know this is quite possibly the most exciting prequel idea I've presented here, but really there is so much potential for prequels in One Piece with its absolute wealth of characters to explore. Much more than 
than I could ever even come close to covering in this singular video, but all I can really conclude with is that I very much look forward to the hopeful expansion of this world, the end of the series. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.